Okay, so this is a quick update video on the crystal power cells. And if you've followed my YouTube channel or gone to laserhacker.com, you've probably seen these over the years. They were hooked up to a live video feed uh, for years on end. This one's run for four years, over four years, over three and a half years, and you know one and a half years on this one. I'm gonna go over why I've had failures with some of them, you know, everything I've learned about them up to this point, and I want to actually take these things apart, cut them open, and look at them later today. But before I do that, I just figured I'd shoot a video, show the, uh, the current update. I'm speaking loud because the 3D printers are all up and running. I've got a lot of future upcoming projects over there. But yeah, let's let's go over these. So this one's been running four years. Like I said, it's been in a low intensity mode, just a low blink mode like that. I've just got it cranked up here to show that it can still output some current after four years. And when I say four years, that's that's pretty much 24 hours a day, every day. There were occasions in the winter when the humidity would get low or different things of that nature that I'd add a few drops. So it might be down for a day or two. But you know, even if you subtract a month, it's still a very impressive runtime. And during that time, the internal pressure pushed the magnesium rod right up out of the top of the pipe cap. So very, very interesting how much pressure you have. And I think that's a key to what makes these things keep running, you know, year after year. So let's go over here and take a look at this one. This one's been running for three and a half years. And during that time, I haven't had any read switch failures on this one because I've got one of these dancing solar flower circuits in there. Uh, check out lid motors youtube channel i think he's drawn a schematic of essentially that same circuit out and uses it to drive a lot of his little motors but you know during that time this one's been maintenance free uh and the the really thing bringing this one to an end is again the crystal cell growth you can see the magnesium rods they may have come up out the top just a little but the bigger issue is this internal pressure ripping the seam and you can see the fresh copper color there at the top of that V showing the very fresh copper as that seam is ripped. You know, that I've just noticed that over the last week. So a lot of internal pressure. And I think that's the key that keeps these things going. You know, the internal crystal growth keeps growing and driving its way into the fresh virgin magnesium. So rather than the magnesium building up, you know, a layer of, of crud or corrosion that would protect it, it's just constantly getting pressed into by the electrolyte itself and the crystal growth. Anyway, that's my theory. Now in this one, I call this the 100 year motor. I was w much overly optimistic. You know, this motor has run for one and a half years so far. During that time, I've had multiple reed switch failures. So I have to, uh, you know, today it stopped again because of the reed switch. And, you know, in transportation, one of the coils broke. So I've updated the easy spin design here uh, since I've made the first one. And it's a little stronger in the way I build these now. But, you know, I've had reed switch failures there and I had major failures on the crystal cells here. And I think the reason I had such extreme failures on these ones is back, if you look at the video when I built these, I put these caps, you know, I took PVC pipe that I sanded down to fit between the copper pipe and the magnesium rod and I pounded these in under a lot of pressure to lock it all together. And I think what that did is just allow the pressure to increase like a firecracker in here, not with a quick explosion obviously, but over time to just rip a seam top to bottom. And you know, the way I've got these hooked up, I'd soldered on these wires to bring me off my copper contacts and I connected them up to ser in series to the magnesium rod. Well, when it ripped up the seam, you know, it broke those wires, so I had to jump over with an alligator clip lead. It's really a mess, so that's the reason this one's come to an end. You can see this one again, ripped top to bottom. So you're dealing with a lot of pressure, and that's one of the things to keep in mind if you're building crystal power cells. You just got a lot of internal pressure. So anyway, I'm going to take these. This Apart. motor is an interesting little thing. I never did a YouTube video on it, so I'll just explain a little bit about it here. It's got a single flat magnet, and you can see that magnet right there, 3D printed hemisphere on each side of that. And uh, the coils are kind of interesting. They go this way and then they cross over, so you can see them crossing there. So you essentially have a situation in which when in the coil fires, you get a pushing and pulling effect very similar to the easy spin. Um, so it's just an experiment I was doing. Again, I'm driving this one with one of the dancing flower circuits. I have a drawer of these. Um, I took them apart, I don't know, three, four years ago to do some experiments, but probably back in the time I was building that motor. Okay, so I took apart the one of the crystal cells from the motor that ran for three and a half years back here. 
And what I found inside is actually really, really amazing. I see lots of very good magnesium material. And you can see the crystal you know, growth along here. And uh, very, very interesting. So this is the edge of the magnesium rod right there. But, you know, just a ton of magnesium left. So for running, you know, three and a half years to have that much, you know, good quality magnesium down through the core tells me this thing would run on and on and on and on for many, many more years. So, you know, this one's blowing out the side. These two look like they're fine. I may just put them on the shelf, you know, clean them up on the outside. And uh, who knows, maybe those ones will even go into another project because there are many more years worth of, you know, runtime on this. So that's really encouraging. Uh, very, very interesting. I was really expecting to have a lot more uh, deterioration to the magnesium rod inside here. I was expecting to be, you know, really pitted and eaten into and, you know, almost non-existent, but it's still in great, great shape. So anyway, folks, that's why you experiment. That's why you open stuff up. Very, very fascinating.